This comes out of section 10.2, the area between two curves. So first of all, just a quick logic exercise that doesn't have much to do with calculus. If I gave you a big rectangle like this and said that the area, the total area of it, um, was 100 you know, square meters. And then I said, uh, somebody cut that into you know, a couple pieces with a jagged line here and said, the area um, of this bottom part that I'm just shading in here you know, area here um, is equal to 70 square meters. And I said, what's the area of this unshaded part? Hopefully everybody here would say, well, the area there is just going to be 100 minus 70, which is 30 square meters. Um, obviously, the drawing not drawn to scale, but you get the idea that, you know, if you have two pieces to an area and you can, you know, you do a little subtraction or adding, you can find the total or find the difference between them. That's the same as what's going to happen here in 10.2. We're going to look at a couple of functions. You know, maybe here's one function here. I can call it f2 of x, because I'll have a second function here that I'll call f1 of x. And if I'm asked for the area from one spot to another, um, maybe let's call the first spot a, first second value x, and I'm saying, what's the area between these two, um, you know, we, we can define as we did before a of x as uh, that's the region r between these two. Um, so between a and x, and between a function two and function one. So as long as one function is above the other, um, we can say that our a prime is equal to f two minus f1 of x, which means that when we go to do our antiderivative or find our area, you know, that, that um, we're basically going to do the same thing we did in 10.1. We're going to say, well, if I take the integral here, um, you know, find the area from a to x, the antiderivative, I'll be able to, to find that. And it actually also works even if this function, you know, one of them is above like this, and the other one is below like this, and if I call them f2 of x and f1 of x again, um, some people get worried when, when one of the functions goes below the axis there. But if I call this a and x again, you know, the area between them is still going to be um, f2 minus f1 and then find the antiderivative. Because what happens here is if you do this first one, it will give you the area under f2. If you do the second one, the, the f1 of x, and find the antiderivative, it gives you a negative answer. But let's, let's say this gave us, for example, an answer of 10. This gave us an answer of negative 8. Well, if I do 10 minus negative 8, I find out that the total area there is 18. And so we, we will see that from time to time. But let's do a more concrete example, because I think uh, the definition stuff is often harder than doing a real life question. So if I have the function, uh, so I've used here intentionally two functions that we should be able to draw fairly easily. Uh, y equals x squared plus y. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have a parabola up here like this. And the other one, y equals x, which is something like this. And we're wondering about from 2 to 4, you know, a region, something like that. Um, so it is important that I see that one function is above the other for that entire interval, otherwise I'd have to break this into two little questions, as I'll do in a later example. But once I see that, I can say that, okay, well, my, my a prime function is equal to x squared plus 5 minus x. So my area function, then, is the antiderivative of that, which is x cubed over 3 plus 5x minus x squared over 2. Um, plus c, but since I'm evaluating it from 2 to 4, I can just say, well, let's just do that from 2, two to 4. So um, we put in some numbers here and figure out what, you know, a of 4 minus a of 2 equals. Um, and if you put in a bunch of values, and you have 4 cubed over 3 plus 5 times 4 minus 4 squared over 2, and then you subtract 2 cubed over 3 plus 5 times 2 minus 2 squared over 2, you should get an answer that is um, equal to 68 over 3, if you keep it in, in fractions. 
exact value, um, 68 over 3. That would be the same answer that you would get if you would have found the area under the parabola first from 2 to 4, the bigger area that would look something like that all the way down to the axis, and then found the small area that would just be under the line y equals x. And if you just subtracted those two, you'd get the same answer of 68 over 3. Um, so it does make sense, hopefully. Uh, notation for later on to do definite integrals will say something like this. The integral from 2 to 4 uh, from x squared plus 5 minus x dx. And then you'll just do the antiderivative and do exactly what we just did and find you get that you get 68 over 3, um, which happens to be the area between those two curves.